Elder A.B., over to you. Oh, thank you, my brother. I was uh, muted for a moment. Uh, uh, this time belongs to Pastor Ziela. Pastor Ziela, over to you. God's children are waiting. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Elder A.B. I can see that today is a very special day. Thank you so much, my sister, for the prayer that was rendered. And I would like to thank um, Doc also for sharing and praying for us and for me uh, this morning. Um, may I invite you as we get towards the end of our presentation of experiences with the shepherd to be with me for the next few minutes as we delve into the word of God. About 3,000 years ago, David wrote one poem that should help us deal with the troubles of life today. 118 words, if you count in the King James Version, and I dare say these words are the most familiar words of all the Psalms that have been canonized. Reading this Psalm kindles a ray of hope for the hopeless, brings healing to the hurting, will guarantee help for the helpless, encouragement for the discouraged, and will provide strength for those who are weak. This morning, we will continue with verse five, and I'm saying it's verse five, part two, as we look at you prepare a table before me in the presence of my head, you anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, amen. Verse five introduces one of the most delightful and enjoyable scenes in the entire Bible. God the shepherd, God the comforter becomes God the host. And it gives me glimpses of what we read and what we find in Revelation chapter 19, verse 9. Then he said to me, write, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. The description of this banquet is so imaginative and so brilliant that one has the impression of being present and smelling the heavenly flavors. And what serves this morning, I am saying, there is an abundance of everything. The cup overflows. Yesterday, we dealt with a thought, one thought only, and indicated that so far, from verse one to verse four, two major characters, we have met two major characters, the sheep and the shepherd. In verse five, there is a third character introduced, and that is the enemy. And yesterday we dealt with the shepherd deals with all our enemies. In other words, the issue of enemies is not our business. And so after the green pasture experience, after being touched by the shadow of death, there is yet another surprise that the shepherd has for those who have decided to walk and continue walking in the of righteousness. Yes, God organizes a big banquet. He becomes like a wedding planner. And he invites all his friends. God, the shepherd himself, serves at the table. Allow me to share two devotional thoughts from part two of verse five. Point number one, the shepherd gives us what we do not know we need. The shepherd gives us what we do not know we need. And so the scene has changed from the field to a feast, from a trail to a table. And the sheep are unaware 
of exactly what the shepherd has already prepared and provided. The sheep are unaware of what exactly the shepherd has already prepared and provided. This morning I am saying the shepherd gives us what we do not know we need. Augustine of Hippo spoke about a concept called prevenient grace. That God is already dealing with our issues even before we come before him to ask that he may begin to provide, that he may begin to deal with those issues. Listen to Matthew, Matthew chapter six, verse eight. Matthew records the words of Christ. For your father knows the things that you have need of before you ask him. Prevenient grace, Isaiah 65, verse 24. The Lord says, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. In other words, even before you close and complete your prayer, the Lord God already knows what needs to be provided for you, even before you know yourself the things that you need. Christ object lesson, page 206. The servant of the Lord writes something in the line of prevenient grace. She writes and says, even before the prayer is uttered, grace from Christ goes forth to meet the grace that is working upon the human soul. Even before the prayer is uttered. I am saying this morning that the shepherd provides us what we do not know we need. In fact, uh, the Lord uh, says, uh, the servant of the Lord records and says to us that our heavenly father has a thousand ways to provide for us of which we know nothing. It's not just provide, even the methodology that he will use, the father has a thousand ways to provide for us of which we do not know. I am saying this morning that the shepherd provides and gives us what we do not know we need. Point number two, is that the shepherd gives us more than we need. Point number one, the shepherd gives us more than we need. You see, he speaks of the overflowing cup, a symbol of abundance. John 10 verse 10 tells us, I am come that they may have life and have life more abundantly. My brothers and sisters, the blessings of God on his children are generous and overflowing. The blessings of God on his children are always exceedingly more. The shepherd gives us more than we need. When you read the account of the wedding at Cana, Jesus provided approximately 120 gallons of fresh wine, much more than what they needed at that particular wedding. When we read the account of Jesus feeding the 5,000 and only the men were counted, 5,000 men. And so it was 5,000 plus, plus. The Bible records that there were 12 baskets of fragment leftovers that were picked by the disciples. I am saying my brothers and sisters, the shepherd gives us more than we need. And don't get me started about the idea of heaven, my brothers and sisters. Ellen G. White writes in the book, Sons and Daughters of God, page 92, the answer to our prayers may not come as quickly as we desire. And it may not be just what we have asked, but this is it friends. This is where it, the point is, but he who knows what is for the highest good of his children 
will bestow a much greater good than we have asked. The shepherd gives us more than we need. In an article in the Adventist Review of 2011, the writer writes and says, it seems clear that God often has a greater answer that's beyond or that is neither yes, no, nor wait. Now, let me explain this. Oftentimes, we in principle indicate that God will either to prayer say yes or no or wait. But the writer of the article brings out a fourth answer and she indicates that it seems clear that God often has a greater answer that's neither yes, no, no wait. She says, instead, he says, I have something better. Answer number four. And testifying of this experience, she says, I have personally experienced the thrill of this better answer. My brothers and sisters, as we pray this morning, I am saying the shepherd gives us more than we need. The shepherd gives us more than we need. Just this morning, as Elder Easy communicated with a pastor from the US, I smiled because I did not expect this. After my sister prayed, he then asked pastor to pray for me as well. And just this morning, I have experienced my message to you personally, that the Lord has given me a double blessing. I usually receive one prayer as I am about to present my message today. I am convinced that the Lord confirms our message that sometimes he will not say yes. Sometimes he will not say no. Sometimes he will not say wait. Sometimes he will say, I will give you greater. I will give you better. Ephesians 3, 20, 21, as I close. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, able to do abundantly, able to do above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him the glory in the church of, by Christ Jesus, to all generations forever and ever, amen. Verse five tells us, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. The shepherd gives us what we do not know we need. The shepherd gives us more than we need. As we close this morning, may I make an invitation for each one of you to join us tomorrow as we close Psalm 23 with the last verse, Psalm 23 verse six. Please join us tomorrow, same time, five o'clock, shall we pray. Gracious, kind and loving Father, we thank you for being our shepherd. We thank you, oh God, for even before we ask, you know exactly what we need. You know what to give us as our portion. Gracious, kind and loving Father, we thank you for you even give us much more than what we ask. We thank you for the blessings of today as we break away into the prayer rooms. Holy Spirit abide and may he attend to each one of us in Jesus' name we pray, amen.